Hello, welcome back. I'm guessing you're here because you've watched the first episode of the Small Bike Adventure in Mongolia. If you did, thank you so much. Uh, well, you know what this is. This is part two, isn't it? Again, about 40 minutes long. Uh, that's about it, really. But don't forget to watch uh, episode 13. I'll put a link below or you'll find it in my channel. That has all the info, all the links, the places uh, where I rented the motorbike, also the hotels I stayed in, and a complete breakdown of all the costs. Meanwhile, please do grab yourself a cup of tea and a coffee. Sit back and enjoy the next episode. Thanks again for tuning in. Good morning. Uh, it's following morning now. Didn't sleep too bad. I've, uh, as you can see, I've just packed all the bike up. Um, yeah, so the time is, I will tell you the time, because it's now 22, eight in the morning. I was up at six, because the lady who runs the place, um, I think she kind of, I don't know, maybe just where they are, either wanted me out, they just start early, because she started scrubbing the carpets outside my room at six in the morning. And uh, when I was bringing my stuff down halfway through, she came into the room and stripped the bed as well. I think she kind of just wanted me gone and so she could get on with her day. Check out my skills. Ah, there we go. Decision made. Um, there's the bike. There we are. Right there. So when I came across the bridge, there was this kind of little valley bit here, right next to the river, which is over there. And uh, uh, some chap wanted me to camp next to him, but I wanted to be out space. It's fine, he just helped me get the bike up on its stand and he said, you, you don't have to pay, it's free. Now I was over the back there early over. I was across the back there, I thought, oh, a bit more on my own there. And there's a little gully down there. And that's where everybody does their dirties because a woman walked over and crouched down and did the business. I thought, yeah, that's why no one's camping over there. All right, important job. Got to wash my t-shirt in the river. Oh God. And there you go, check that out. Oh, look at that. <laughs> set up yeah I got kids playing over there lots of stuff going on behind me I've even got Mongolian disco music in the background can you hear it yeah hopefully won't go on too late otherwise uh, that's about it I think and tomorrow I've made a few little plans to go up into the hills here hopefully that'll pan out okay so thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one thanks for now ah good morning uh, another fine morning another glorious day 20 past eight this morning. They're very uh, late starters around here. They were up very late last night, to be fair, and so they don't get up early, but that's okay. Uh, something very weird happened last night. I woke up about one in the morning, just a mighty loud noise of this terrible karaoke singing. I mean, really out of key, out of tune, a man and a woman. I thought, what's going on? I was only half awake. And I thought, is there some sort of cabaret that goes on here that I missed out on? And um, as I sort of, sort of came out of my slumber, I sort of looked out the tent and there's a, a little sort of group of tents over there and they had a fire going. And they were just playing extremely loud music. I mean, really loud. But it wasn't just music, it was bloody awful. It was, it was Mongolian kind of local kind of mute, chanty music. But God, it was rotten. It was so out of key and it kept repeating itself. This went on for about an hour. Well, after about an hour of me trying to get back to it, I eventually got my brain together and got my I got like noise cancelling headphones and I put those in and that was all right. But boy, never get away in England. They're, they're lynching in England. I swear you did that in the UK. But no, they didn't mind it around here. They loved a bit of that. Anyway, I'm here. I'm going to fill my water bottles up and I've got a Steri pen just in case this water is a bit funny. But I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. Ice cold. Oh, I'm not joking. That's ice cold, that is. Oh, look. Look, 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 look. Over there. Looks like a morning yoga session started up. I, just, I, I didn't see the, I didn't see the memo, memo ball. Did you see it when we came in? 
Oh, I forgot to bring my mat. I've got my infl uh, inflatable mat, won't work with it. Oh, I just got to miss out on this one. Beautiful place, but it's like all the hotels have claimed it all. Um, even this park I'm on now, down there there's a gate. Well, that doesn't look like this has been shot for ages. They put a no entry sign, the parking sign. There is like a hotel up here, but it's kind of like, oh, it's only for us. But this is a park that goes all the way around this here. to my map. Not happy, not happy boy. Up here, but I like the look of that around the back there somewhere. With all my moaning that the hotels have uh, got all the land, and technically they have, um, I managed to get through up the top here, which is beautiful. Whoa. Oh my days, oh my days. <sighs> How beautiful. Tell you what, this place, stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, hopefully I can stay here tonight and not get disturbed. <laughs> It's not supposed to rain until this evening, about three in the morning, but I'm telling you, those clouds are telling a very different story, aren't they? Mm, better get the tent up quick.
straight in. Yeah, look at that. Cool. And now we've got to sort of, we're going to have for dinner. Should we have a look? See what's in the. I uh, can't remember. Was it in this side? No, let's come around here. Let's see what we got in here. There we go. Now we've got five bean cassoulet. I do like the sound of that, I've got to say. Uh, chili long carne. Uh, maybe, maybe. I think we're going to go for the. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I can't make my mind up. What's this one? Couscous with Cajun spices and vegetables. Hmm. Maybe. Hmm. All right. Well, we went for the Cajun couscous at the end, and it was a bumper-sized pack, and uh, it took quite a while to eat all of that. I can tell you. Um, well, the rains held off. Now, I had a little bit, and that's all gone. Oh, what else is to say? Well, today was only a short day. I did, I think, about 16 kilometres. This is like nothing. So I haven't actually come very far at all. And tomorrow, the plan was to go to the valley. It's just behind me here. There's more of these Gur camps and hotels in there. I'm, hopefully, I'll find somewhere to camp. There is a little trail I found on the map that I'm going to try and get to. Um, otherwise, I think that's about everything at the minute um nothing much more to report i think so anyway thanks for watching again i really do appreciate it and uh i will see you the next episode which will be tomorrow and uh i'll be having my morning oats and a nice coffee and let's hope it's not raining too much thanks again take care bye bye mm, yes it's been raining in fact it started raining at 11 o'clock last night and it didn't stop to about about an hour ago and i've slept in it's quarter past 10. Not good. So yeah, not a great day. Let me show you. Oh, oh, there she is. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's a shame about the weather. Um, not sure what the plan's going to be today. There's so much water came down last night. What to do, what to do. Well, it's two o'clock now. Um, it hasn't cheered, well, it's cheered up a little bit, but not a massive amount. And I've made a commitment to stay here another day. So while my lunch is rehydrating and my coffee is cooling down, um, I thought I'd uh, give you more of a treat with the motorbike, because that's really what this whole thing was about, about motorbikes and Mongolia. So um, I'm gonna do just a very short uh, review on the Shinra 150. Here you go. Hello there, good people, and uh, welcome to a bike review. Slightly different to uh, the other reviews I've done, and this one is off the uh, Chinese-made, there she is, Shinarei, and it's a 150cc. Today will be a great day to tell you how I'm getting on with it, and what I do like about it, and what I don't like about it. So, let's go and have a look. Um, what can I say about this bike? Well, firstly, I hired the bike and I've hired it at 13 euros per day for two weeks. So that's dirt cheap, not much at all. Now this bike is made in China and if you buy one of these as a Mongolian, it will cost you $800. So the good news for me is that if I happen to break it or it gets stolen, I've only got to come up with $800 to replace it. That's not bad. However, the bad news is that well, it's an $800 bike, and you kind of get what you pay for. The first thing I noticed when I picked this bike up, and I just took it for a little test ride, is that it's got a drum brake on the back. You know, that's not unusual, but the front is also a drum brake, and this front brake is rubbish, utter rubbish. The back brake is actually far superior. I tend to use that a lot more. So the stopping ability is awful. I've driven it now on tarmac for good 300 kilometers now, and it rattles like mad. It is uh, all through you. Um, I've been driving it really no more than 40 miles an hour. I'm sure it will go faster than that. I can't be honest with you. I wouldn't want to do it. 
I'm worried the thing's gonna break. Um, so 40, nice steady pace. At least I know hopefully it's gonna get me to where I wanna go. So they're not built for speed or comfort. It has all your regular your gear set up, but something very different that I've never come across before is this whole switch thing up and down, up and down here. Uh, when I first got on it, actually I didn't mind it. It's obviously one down, four up, neutral in the middle, but you could just use your heel to flick down, flick down, coming up through the gears. But where I've got my bags on the back now, um, it's pushed me slightly forward, so I'm back to how I'm used to just having my toe on it. It's probably best that I stick to what I know. So that's pretty good. It also comes, as you see, all these big bars around it. If you look around the back here, all of this here as well, under here, and for the um, my own bags, and they've got like a little, you come to here, there we are. This here is for things to sit on, and I've seen lots of Mongolians driving these, and uh, they've got massive, massive things on the side. Just these huge whatever they're carrying all the time. Uh, you know, so I have padlocked it up with the crappiest padlock in the world because the lady who owns the bike is very insistent that I keep it locked all the time. She's worried it's going to get stolen. Understandable. Also, I've discovered in the last week that the, uh, the Shinere smells of petrol pretty much most of the time. So I'm thinking either out the tank or somewhere here. I can just smell petrol all the time, so reassuring. Um, but what don't I like about it? Well, I don't like the fact that it seems to be a bit unpredictable, especially when it comes to starting. I've had a couple of times now with the uh, main starts which did nothing, just nothing. Um, and then five minutes later it worked. And when I do ride the bike, um, I kind of, if I happen to stop somewhere and I go to start again, it takes an awful lot of effort to get this going again. Um, what I will say, I did meet one local who spoke really good English. And he went, ah, Shinere, Shinere. He went, yeah, oh, bad bike, bad bike. Very, very dangerous. He went, Chinese, Chinese rubbish. His words, not mine. So there we have it. I'm actually going to see if it actually starts. It's been sitting here for 24 hours, lots of rain. Who knows if it will start. Let's give it a go. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. That's a, kind of there you have it really. That's the uh, that's the Chevrolet 150. So what's the point of this review? Because you can't buy this bike in uh, in the UK. It's just uh, it's a no go because it won't pass health and safety and everything. Um, but the point is, if you want to come out here and do some biking out here, 13 euros a day. It's dirt cheap. I've uh, haven't gone too crazy on it. Well, a little bit. Um, and lots of locals use them, and they're easy to repair. Apparently, hopefully, I'll never have to experience that. So uh, yeah, come out to Mongolia, rent one of these, have a laugh. I did, well I still am. Thanks for watching. It's oh. ah, nice. It camps right over there. It's a five bean cassoulet. Doesn't look great, but tastes all right. <coughs> oh, bloody hell, I think I swallowed a fly. Oh. Well, <coughs> let's get that cleared out. Well, that's the end of another day. Hasn't been the fun field biking day I thought it was gonna to be, to be honest with you. But you know, you gotta have a day off every now and again. And today was the day off. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I will see you hopefully in the next episode, which will be tomorrow. Till then, take care. Bye bye. Good morning. And it is a fine morning today. That's beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Lovely. Let's have some breakfast. I've got a special breakfast treat today. 
um, baked apple porridge. So it's my first hot breakfast in over a week. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. It's all right. Get back into the groove. Oh, let's get in steep. I know it probably doesn't look it on the on the video. Oh, let's go to this side. It's actually surprisingly steep. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah. You shouldn't have Thank you. Hold this. Ah, I got. Oh. Can I go around? No. Poor English. He needs hard work. English. Can you be chill, sir? Man. Let's try again. Give me the other guy. There we go. Why drive to the supermarket when you can ride your horse? With an ice cream. Oh, yeah, just that training came in handy. So over here. We should go in there under the trees. What do you reckon? Posing for the camera. Mm. Oh, look at that. Nice. Maybe we should have taken that top bit. Uh, all right, hold on. Don't fall. Yeah. Momentum. Uh. Whoa. This is a bit better. Just say this is what goes on here because obviously they didn't want people coming down. They do this. There's the path all the way up. I'm going down. Whoop, whoop. All back. Ooh, nice he does it. Whoop. <laughs> nice. Well, I have found a spot. It's quite nice. I do get the wonderful view of. Uh, can you see over there? There it is, look, that's the uh, new development that's, well, not being developed. Uh, there's a little family up there, I saw them earlier. They seem okay up there. But I've uh, got a camping spot here, got a fireplace. Let's have a look at the whole thing. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? Cool, cool. Are you ready for the choices for dinner tonight? Yes, okay, well I've got four packs left, but I only need three. One of them is gonna be a lunch. I'll talk you through them. We've got mushroom risotto, uh, 800 calories. Uh, oh look, another mushroom risotto. <laughs> didn't think that one out, uh, I didn't think about that one. 
uh, a chili non carne with rice, 7.30, and posh baked beans. Now, I've had two of these already. Actually, the first one I had, I wasn't too keen on. The second one I loved. Must have been depending on what kind of mood I was in. This is extra large. I'm tempted with that. And maybe I have one of these uh, for lunch tomorrow. And that leaves those two. All right, all right, all right. Should we go for the... Oh, no, I don't know now. See, if I have risotto tonight, I don't want risotto tomorrow, do I? I'll have that for lunch after. Oh, all right, all right. We're going to go for this mushroom risotto. That's all there is to it, mushroom risotto. I hope it's good. Oh. It's very mushroomy. All right, it's a bit hot. This is, I don't make this is. This is expedition foods. I, I tried a load of different ones, but yeah, sorry guys. Expedition foods, you're not the best compared with the others. It's okay, it's okay. It won't be too hard, you know. This one's a bit like baby food, to be honest with you. Not that I know what baby food's like, but I reckon it's a bit like this. Hmm, oh well. Well, good morning and welcome back to another episode here in sunny Mongolia. Um, well, we've only got about two and a half days to go now. And uh, I've got to say, last night was the roughest night's sleep I've had so far, even though it's a very nice nice spot. Um, I'll tell you for why, because uh, uh, I don't know, in the last episode I mentioned that just camping next to me, there's a couple of lads and their wives and they've got a few kids. And uh, but last night, about half past 12, the two guys thought it'd be a great idea to come and wake me up and uh, see if I fancy going out and doing some drinking with them, some whiskey in fact. And they kept pointing to, there's a shop up there that sells uh, whiskey. And um, after about five minutes of this conversation, I kind of had to really persuade them that I just want to go back to bed and that's that. And they kind of went, okay, and off they went back to their tent and so forth. Uh, of course, the only problem with this is that um, it's all very well. I know what you're thinking, it's nice. The neighbors come around to see if I fancy a drink. But when they did knock on my tent at 12.30 and I was absolutely fast asleep, I had no idea who they were. I didn't even know they were from the tent next door. I just unzipped, I gave them a little shout at first and I unzipped the tent and there's these two guys there who I, I didn't know who they were. So yeah, I was a little bit shaken up, I won't lie. And thinking about it now, I got a feeling they, um, they might have wanted me to go and buy the whiskey because they were a bit drunk already. Um, there's a possibility the shop might not have served it to them, so I thought we would get the we get the foreign chap to get it instead. So anyway, that kind of uh, disturbed me a little bit. Um, after that, about an hour later, uh, something was pushing up against my tent in the corner. I thought, what's that? And I kind of pushed back. It turns out it was there's a dog here, a sort of wild dog, and he was trying to get hold of my morning oats, which were in the corner, and he actually knocked them over. So he then decided to bark at my tent for about 30 seconds. I mean, quite quite a vicious bark as well. And bearing in mind I'm a massive dog lover, it's like, what do I do? I just have to sit that out. I eventually, eventually got to sleep. Blah, 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 blah. Eventually got to sleep. Um, I need to be woken then at 5:30 by a whole uh, herd of cows coming through. Uh, and when I say coming through, not just passing by, but I'm going to turn around. Can you see my tent, which is there? And they came down this track here, all of them, and some of them took great interest in my tent. And so that kept me awake. And meanwhile, we've got this lovely little cow here. Just going to have a quick look. Oh, he's on his. He's on the. Move. All right, I'm all packed up, ready to go. Uh, just to let you know, that takes usually about 45 minutes to an hour to pack everything away. I do tend, I do take time. I could probably do it in half an hour, but I take the time and get everything. I tend to empty the two. Should I start again? No, I think you know what I'm going on about. <coughs> it's pretty, isn't it? Very pretty. A bit bumpy. looks ridiculously steep. I have no idea where we're going to be able to get up there. It's it. Dodgy. 
won't lie to you, that's looking a bit shit. I'm not going to manage that, I don't think. I think we've uh, overcooked it. Go over there and have a look and I'll walk up. Nice little spot. Okay, so I parked the bike up, we're on the, uh, see the top of a hill here. It's really nice, great spot. Um, but that trout, well you saw for yourself, very bumpy, very steep. I'm gonna have a quick look, see what it's like at the top there. I mean, you know, cause going up's one thing, and then it's coming down, it's gonna be possibly a no-go, so. Well, I thought, oh, I'll come up through the tree line. But this is, this is no good either. Too, too many things in the way big gully that's really mogley uh, that's what happens up here all right go to the top oh, i don't know it's beautiful look at that oh. wow look at that view see this bit's lovely this bit's all lovely there's the bike, right over there. Have some lunch. Oh, I've still got that other mushroom risotto to have. <laughs> and uh, head back over to the other valley where I know there's some camping spots. I'm, uh, it's basically, it's above my pay grade. That's what I'm gonna say to come up here, especially when I've only got a couple of days to go. I mean, it's great fun coming up that Mowgli bit, but um, yeah, it got to a point, it got to a point. I thought, oh, I'm gonna come off. Uh, let's see what we got here. Ah, oh, look how Mowgli that is. Can you see that? Perfect spot for lunch. Perfect spot for lunch, wouldn't you say? Yes, yes. How am I going to get down? <laughs> uh, could go the direct route. Should we go the direct route? Straight down. All right, let's do that. All right, let's get back to the bike. Okay. What to do? That's annoying because I was really looking forward to do that trail. Um, well, I was more skilled and had a more powerful bike. Uh, yeah, it'd be no problem, but <laughs> it's a big problem. It's the end of the day now. Well, call past six. Um, I know you really want to know what I'm having for dinner. It's chili non carne. It's the bumper pack as well. Huge. So we'll see how that fares. I think it's going to be good. I haven't tasted it, but I've got some starving, so it's going to be great. So again, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will catch you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Good morning. Oh, and welcome back to another episode. 
two days to go. Um, lovely day. And I wasn't disturbed last night. That's even better, but it's really hot. So as soon as that sun's on the tent, uh, you're kind of awake, really. So uh, breakfast, yeah. Worked out I got enough sugar cubes, which is three, and coffee for three more coffees. That's it. It's just as well. So three more there. One at lunchtime, one this evening, one tomorrow morning. And that's like military operation, that. I mean that's like that's like organized to the to the nth degree, whatever they call it, something like that they say in the films. Aren't they? Anyway, we're okay, we're okay. No panic yet, no panic. <sighs> Here. Oh. No. Down here. Easy as she goes. It's too bad. Regretfully, I won't be going up there where I really wanted to go. I could probably pick my way through. But seeing as I've only got a day to go, it's just not worth the uh, the problems that might occur. Slightly smoother route. And there's all the Gur camps, all the holiday makers. Yeah, I know I'm back at the same spot, um, but it's it's on the way home, and um, you know it's a safe spot. It's got water here, it's got shade. You know what's not to like? No toilet facilities, but hey ho. Uh, good morning to uh, <clears throat> what is the last morning on the bike. I kind of skipped over last night because the weather changed, it got really windy, didn't rain too much, but very windy. And I was asleep by about half nine, ten o'clock. It's very quiet here now at the campsite. Very, very quiet, which is nice. Um, cup of tea, breakfast, and then uh, we'll get on the way. Okay. huge I know it does probably doesn't look massive from there but we'll take a walk up so where is he there he is yeah. that is Chinggis Khan and uh, apparently if you type Chinggis Khan history off and the statue and all of that sort of stuff into Google you get loads of information on it loads of history as well about Chinggis Khan and what he did um, and the reason why I say that is because I haven't got any information on me at the minute. I did read it up a bit. He's uh, he, he, he set he set the record straight out here. Put it that way, sort of thing. But uh, yeah, yeah, just look it up. It's all there. It's all there. Well, that's that done. Just a quick visit, really. This is a statue. It's very nice. Um, yeah, we're going to head on back now and drop the bike off. I think we got about 100 kilometers. It's all on tarmac, going through a few towns. So I've got to have my wits about me, my wits about me, because they drive like crazy. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, this is the uh, one of the level crossings for the Trans-Siberian Railway line. It runs all the way, all the way through down to China. I didn't, oh. think, I didn't think there was anyone here for a minute there. Uh. <laughs> I started to worry that there was nobody here. <laughs> but you are here, it's good. Uh -huh. Now it's going to city of Ulaanbaatar. Yes, I have. I have you need a taxi? I will need a taxi, yes. Oh. All right, we're all back in. 
Now I've just got to load up and get to the hotel. Right. I've decided that these Lomo bags are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And I've decided also that Anna can have these and hopefully she can rent them out to other people because I think they'll be perfect on this bike. They're not expensive. Uh, I'm going to order some more. I'm going to, on the next episode, I'll put a link to the companies where you, where you want to get them. They're not expensive at all and they're really, really good. You've got a good turn though. <sighs> what are you guys still doing here? I told you I'm done, I'm finished. No, I know what it is. You want to see my hotel room? I'll tell you what, it's worth a look though. Check this out. So, here we go. Oh, look at that, like a full post of bed. <gasps> Mini butt. Look at this for a shower. Look at this. Full walk in wet room there. Look at that. Oh, I know. It's cool, right? It's cool. The good news, just as a final point, is um, Anna, who looked after me, she also sorted out for me. Look, big, big TV, big TV. She also, so I can, I can even see the shower. I can see my feet when, if I was here, down there. Look, that's crazy. <laughs> Let's get some light on me. Anna sorted out a cab for me to this hotel. And the same cab driver, I think it's a friend of hers, is also going to pick me up at uh, five o'clock in the morning, day after next, to get to the airport. So uh, that's a bit of a result, isn't it? Didn't really have to think about that. Um, this is a splendid hotel. I won't lie to you. Let's move the toilet. Oh, look, look, look. Oh, oh, look, look. Oh, best bit, best bit. Check this out, check this out. <sighs> Oh, <laughs> I have no idea what any of this means. No idea. Look at it. Look at it. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try that out later. All right. I can see you. I can. See. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give every every button a go. Every button a go. Right now, that really is it. Apart from the fact tomorrow I've got to go shopping, and to buy, buy my lovely girlfriend a, a gift if I can find something decent. Uh, meanwhile, uh, please. Take a look at the next episode and uh, we'll uh, decompress and go through some of the details. Right, I'm going to um, have a shower. <laughs> I deserve it. I need it. Okay, see you later. Bye. <laughs>